Hello there. General Kenobi. Dude, seriously. That's the wrong line. This is the intro, remember? Oh, right. Um, Welcome to the Discussion Alliance. We cover the latest topics and news from all corners of the Star Wars universe. So grab your blue milk and keep your seals tight because we've got a lot in store for you today. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Discussion Alliance. I'm Aiden. And I'm Kyle. And we're back. We're back, everybody. Woohoo! It's, it's good to be back. It's been forever since we did recorded an episode like this. Like, <laughs> TLDR, life's been really busy, and that's why we haven't uploaded any new episodes to YouTube or to... Um, Spotify and or wherever else you get your podcasts. So, yeah, that's that's why we were gone. So, but now we're back. Hopefully, we'll be able to can maintain a consistent uh, a consistent upload schedule this time and or something. I don't know. But anyway, here we go. To start off this episode, we're gonna go into the news. So. Oh yeah, news time. <laughs> So, as of yesterday, as of recording this, it has been announced that um, Dave Filoni, a veteran of Star Wars, is going to be the new chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. Woo, Star Wars fans cheering in the background. <laughs> yeah, and according to a article that I found on Vanity Fair, according to <laughs> to it... Uh, let's see. Filoni has a new mission in the Star Wars universe after guiding Rosario Dawson's force-wielding hero to distant celestial realms in the first season of Ahsoka. The writer-producer director who started out working alongside George Lucas on the animated Clone Wars show nearly two decades ago has ascended to a new position at Lucasfilms, one that will give him input into all galactic storytelling going forward. Yeah, he has been heavily involved, and so hopefully this will be for the better. Yeah, I've, so I'm going to be honest, I've recently been on t- Twitter, and there are people who are not too pleased. And I mean, what you, who, you, you're going to blame them? It's like friggin', it's friggin' Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Twitter is a nightmare for, it's a nightmare for stuff like this. People, it's it's just a toxic waste dump. I I, I can't. Hack, but we but, we get the other opinions at least out of it. Yeah, people are not. There are some people who are not happy with Dave Filoni being the head of being the chief creative officer. Of, I mean, I guess the argument for that is I've talked with a handful of friends, and they're like, I mean. A lot of these guys that I've talked with are very, I'm going to say, OG Star Wars fans. And by that, not necessarily, oh, they were born in around when the original trilogy came out. But they are very heavy set. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. They're very passionate about the original movies, the original six, and that sort of vision. And although, like, they enjoyed stuff like Clone Wars and Rebels, they still feel like Dave Filoni has sort of gone off mm-hmm. of the star wars path and I'm, I'm i'm making that sound like oh this is a completely different group of star wars fans and I'm, I'm pretty much just saying that there's a number of star wars fans out there that feel like they want us to return more to this i, I keep saying them but like i know i'm generalizing i'm trying to put this mm-hmm. i'm trying to make mm-hmm. things fair right now but a lot of star wars fans want like the sort of jedi versus sith stuff back and i that that sort of was the argument against andor for example was that Mm -hmm. there's no jedi there's no sith what the heck's going on right now and that targeted (laughs) that that that, i think it's reasonable to say that targeted a specific part of the star wars audience which i personally think it included myself i i enjoy the tv show but i also enjoy sith versus jedi stuff and so i think that could be the argument against dave dave filoni gaining this new position is that people some star wars fans 
maybe looking for a new direction at this point. It's like, oh, he's been involved for so long. Can we have a change? I don't know. That, that, that's what goes through my head. Hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little shaky. Yeah, it, and I, I, I know that sort of, like, generalizes, so like, oh, those fans and stuff like that. I mean, everyone, this is, this is obvious. I mean, everyone has their opinions that they're entitled to, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. with Star Wars, a lot of it has been, like, you, you started off with this, like select group of fans who enjoyed Star Wars, but because Star Wars has expanded so much, we have yeah. so many characters now. <laughs> there are groups of fans within the Star Wars fan group. So now it's like you have to keep this balance. Which yeah. and nobody knows what that balance is. So I I think it's good going forward that they just try to tackle a bunch of different series and just see what hits. Which is sort of what they've been doing yeah. some so far, I would think. Yeah, it's unlike marvel star wars has been very hit more so than miss <laughs> well i mean yeah marvel a lot of it is they had a platform to build their movies off of i mean it was i mean part of it is they had the success of iron man and thor and captain america early on but all of it was built off comic books i mean they had all of the lore just sitting there whereas yeah. now I mean, we have stuff such as uh, the expanded universe. We have Star Wars comics to build off of, but mm-hmm. not those things aren't necessarily being translated into movies and TV shows, what we see on the screen. A lot of what's happening is just brand new. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. some little Easter eggs are pulled, but it's all fresh, and it's all what the creative directors and writers at Lucasfilm are just trying to come up with right now. Yeah. Because there's like, I, I'm thinking about it now because there's like, I'm trying to think. Aside from season three of Bad Batch, I'm trying to see of like, think of like other Star Star Wars. I almost said Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh-oh. Careful there. Careful wrong, there. Fr- wrong franchise. <laughs> the, the hate between Star Wars, I'm, I know this is off on a little thing. The hate between Star Wars and Star Trek. I want to know if that, like, uh, that's actually real. Yeah. It's like maybe at one point. Because the thing is, like Star Trek, was always like a TV show that had movies. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Star Wars was like, maybe the Clone Wars and Rebels changed that, but it was like was movies that had TV shows. Yeah. That that's how I see it. Yeah. Okay. Now, anyway, before we get sidetracked, I'm trying to think. My bad. There's, <laughs> there's also like several, several, like friggin', uh Star Wars projects that are in the Oh, the words. timeline. Yeah. So like, and I'm curious as to how that is, because let's see. There's Star Wars Skeleton Crew, Star Wars The Acolyte, Bad Batch Season 3, of course, Andor Season 2? Yeah. You're still working on it. Oh, that, right? I forgot about that. <laughs> let's see. Oh, yep, yeah, I just pulled it up. Oh, yeah. the... So the thing is, some of this stuff, I believe, is subject to change. Like, for example, Rogue, Rogue Squadron was something that they talked about, but, like, I don't think that's happening now. Yeah. I think. And, like, Rangers of the New Republic was another thing. But ever since uh, Corano was booted from the Mandalorian, I don't know if that's happening now. Yeah. Let's see. Looks like uh, they announced Lando at one point. I believe I'm looking at an older one. I think I'm looking at an older one. Yeah. I'm looking at an IGN... Oh. An IGN article from yesterday. <laughs> as of oh, recording sweet. this. So let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Skeleton Crew, Acolyte, Bad Bad. Oh, yeah. Andor. Oh, I'm looking at the same thing, too. Yeah it, was, oh, yeah. it was just updated. Yeah. Then there's... I completely forgot Taika Waititi is doing a movie on Star Wars. <laughs> Wait, wasn't one of the movies... I know this was just updated. I swore I heard something about like one of the movies being cancelled. Uh, I think it was the... It was... Oh. From what I am seeing, according to IGN, it's the movies that have been cancelled was one by Kevin Feige. Ooh. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. David ben- Benioff and D.B. Weiss. They had Star Wars movies. And those got cancelled. I can't remember if those are part of like the new trilogy coming out or. Mm. 
And then there's... They were going to make a Lando movie? Wow. Yeah, there was weird. There was stuff that happened behind the scenes and all that. <laughs> and I'm that I, I don't know that affected it well, in a negative way. Well, I'm sure way. Filoni going forward, he's going to continue to condense down this list at least for like the next seven years, six, seven years I'm going to think of. I mean, if you think about when movies... Unless they release a new Star Wars movie every year, which would be surprising. I would think at least there'd yeah. be a gap year in between. Yeah, because but... I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about this, but it's like, in the past, for the... I, I think of, like, the sequel trilogy and all that. Yeah, yeah, people, be, be quiet. I can hear you typing in the comments or <laughs> audibly groaning, but bear with me here. What is what I'm saying is is that when the sequel trilogy came out, they like released it, at, like released a movie every couple of years, you know. Oh yeah, I believe they did 2015, 20. Wait, 20. Well, I'm, I, I'm referring because, to the because main... there was Solo, there was Solo and Rogue One, but I thought it was like something like 2015. Yeah. 20... They... 18 like there would be a new something like there that. would be like a new movie or two every every like year or so so <laughs> yeah oh my goodness yeah <sighs> hold on my my dog is scratching at my door <laughs> gosh darn it get in here we got a dog intruder folks yep she's in here now <laughs> Well, well, we'll live. We'll live with it. Yeah, and then it's like I also think of like Mandalorian two, which that came, which seasons one and two came out one year apart from each other. Then there was Book of Boba Fett in twenty twenty one, and then season three of Mando last year. So, and then Ahsoka just came out. Yeah. Also. Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's also Bad Batch 2020 season one, then 2021. I think was so. Two. That came out just after. No, I, I I forgot. No, it was Clone Wars, then Mandalorian. So there's a gap, and then Bad Batch came out. Yeah. I think every episode of our podcast we've had like. Like a recollection moment like this, where we've had to rethink back of all the stuff that came out during the Disney era. <laughs> I think we've been pretty consistent on that. Yeah. Just and apologies everyone listening and watching. Uh it's I apologies if it's getting a little confusing <laughs> or something, but I think eh. it's fair for any Star Wars fan to have to remember yeah. what the heck has happened, especially with the amount of stuff <laughs> that's come out. You think about I mean the first three it was a different time. The first three Star Wars movies spanned I want to say it was like 79, 82, 85. I don't quote me on those years. But point being, that was six. Yeah. I, I even forgot the dates I just said. Whatever, six, seven years for three movies. And in the matter of three years, we've had Mando, Season 7 Clone Wars, Book of Boba Fett, Andor, Ahsoka. I mean, yeah. we've, gotten... we've had so much going on. Yeah, crap ton. And happened. just add a couple of years before that, and you have the sequel trilogy, man, not sequel, sequel trilogy, Solo, Rogue One. All I mean, and we, we've just, had a lot. Yeah. Let me see. I gotta look this up now. Every Star Wars project. I mean, I, I guess you can include Rebels in there, too, because it started 2014. And so that, that went into the sequel era. Yeah. And then there's also like the other uh, kid shows going on too. If we wanted to include those, I'm forgetting them. Like oh, the Resistance. I think that's one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, the movies in release order. And there's the. It's got the Star Wars movie in chronological orders. Then there's movies and TV shows in chronological order. God. Oh yeah, there was also Obi Wan. Oh my god, I, <laughs> I forgot about that show. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, there's so many I've completely forgotten about. There's even friggin' Star Wars Resistance, which I hear is not even that good. 
I've heard. Well, it was aimed for kids. The, oh yeah. The few, yeah, that's. I, I talk to a, an online group reg, like on a regular basis about Star uh-huh. Wars content, and a good yeah. number of them actually like Resistance. Part of it is they are a very story driven group. Like they enjoy that stuff. I personally haven't watched it. For all I know, I could take the viewpoint of like, oh, this is such a deep and meaningful story. Oh. Or I could be like, this is just a kid's show. There's nothing going on. Why am I here? Yeah. Oh, gosh. There's even Tales of the Jedi, that one, like, spin off. Oh, my uh, God. Clone Wars ser- anthology. Could... Another thing. that This is just adding to the point, the reasons of, like, there's just been so much. I mean, I even forgot about Obi Wan. I mean, yeah. how could I forget about Obi Wan? But that also says something about how much I like that show. Now, Tales of the Galaxy on the other side, Tales of the Galaxy, Tales of the Jedi. I enjoyed Tales of the Jedi. Just again, that sort of side, sort of spinoff stuff. Yeah, it's great like, to have in between your main stuff. Yeah, just it's just. Uh, um, I'm trying to think. What are the words? Words are not coming to me right now. To just give it, give people something to look at whilst they're working on the main stuff. I mean, yeah, that that's what it's supposed to be. These little small projects that supplement everything going forward. If, if you're gonna have a plan where it's like, hey, we're gonna be releasing Star Wars content twenty four seven, it's like, yeah. okay, folks, we gotta balance it out between your main lore. And your side stuff. Because in my opinion, this is something different now, but like all of the TV shows that we've had recently that all connect to each other, it's just a lot to process now. Like Mandalorian yeah. tied into Book of, Bo- Book of Boba Fett, which then tied back into Mando Season 3. Yeah. Which then ties into Ahsoka now. And it's like, whoa, what is happening, guys? Yeah, it's like, a like lot. We've had three different TV shows mixed in between with and or and obi-wan like how many different projects like like if you think about a normal a normal show like for example star wars the clone wars they would just keep going but no we've had five different tv projects in the last three years it's just yeah and that's not including the animated stuff yeah man (laughs) it's it's, so dave filoni if you're listening to this which i am betting you All of my money that you isn't. aren't. If you're listening to this, please condense the projects down. I'm hoping he does that. If, if yeah. anything about this news, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, because there's like, there's a lot that... And now my dog wants out. Hold on. <laughs> ah, fine. Get out of here. So, folks, this is the part that's where Kyle in, takes over the just... show. And Kyle will be taking on from now on and the show will be kyle only okay i'm just feeling like i'm getting back now <laughs> i'm oh, back, back i'm oh, back no. <laughs> okay yeah well anyways mm, yeah, i think I, I, was, I was trying to segue into our next topic i, th- I think we've yeah we, we, we've, we've milked it for now <laughs> of course <laughs> we've gotten the point across unless i i i, I said my final thoughts were you going to say anything any hopes for what? if uh dave filoni was listening i if for dave filoni if you are hearing this just uh i don't know make <laughs> make this make future content good <laughs> just make it good i don't just do better just considering you're now the chief creative officer and you've known star wars a lot longer than some of the people there at lucasfilm i just my hope is that you can that you future projects are good you are now our silver bullet <laughs> this is what it's come down to <laughs> yeah well anyways I'm, I'm gonna segue i'm forcing it now um i mentioned okay. earlier that one of the okay. most recent projects of course was ahsoka so yeah. we thought we would give you guys the best possible review in like 15 minutes, which we know will become more like 20 minutes of the Ahsoka TV show that came out. What has it been? Three months now? It's uh, no, it's but three months. Started. Nope, I'm overshooting. <laughs> <laughs> November, <laughs> October, September, August. So Whoa. it's been at least a few. It's been at least a few months. So we've had this to 
let's see the show the release the final one released about a month ago so, so yeah had this this is sort of settled in for both of us for about a month so we were thinking hey now that we've had this it's time to gather our thoughts let's yeah. throw down the ideas what do we think about it i would say that it's it's pretty good it's, it's a pretty good show it's a lot it's a lot better than some of the stuff that uh, Lucasfilm has put out. I'm not saying it's all everything before Ahsoka has been bad. It's just that it's it's just like I I'm losing my words now. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I mean, I, I I have to agree with that. I think it's I enjoyed Ahsoka overall. It took a safe approach. I'll, I'll describe it as that. It, it, yeah, it, it played it, it didn't safe do anything a too drastic to possibly yeah. do anything super wrong i'm gonna just say that really blandly but yeah yeah it's yeah i played it a little safe but then I, at the same time it's like oh yeah this is actually pretty cool i enjoyed this yeah i mean do we just want to quickly run through the episodes i mean it was they, like, they divided it quick, parts yeah. eight parts yeah i mean there was yeah, I can I, I can just quickly read the summaries and then we'll just go off them. So the first one, of course, was just like reintroducing Ahsoka and she finds the orb with the map. Yeah, that was something. Which, that episode, it was I think it was just a lot of, if I remember correctly, it was just very dramatic. Like it was like, whoa, here's what's going on. Yeah. Fate of the universe on the line. That sort whoa. of stuff. Yeah. And then the next episode, they jump. I, I'm forgetting. There might be some stuff like, oh, at the end of the first episode, they introduce. Anyways, I believe the second episode, that's when they bring back Sindula and Sabine. As well as a few say, other hey. characters from Rebels. We go to the shipyards, which is, uh, I believe is on Corellia, right? Pretty sure, yeah. So it's a little close to home because, you know, Han Solo and all that. Yeah. And then that's when they deal with, like, they, they, they mentioned the idea of uh, Imperials in the New Republic ranks, which is cool, but mm-hmm. the way that they delivered just was like, oh, they're bad all of a sudden. Oh, no, we're being deceived. It's just like, what is happening? It, and they didn't even touch that topic since then. <laughs> it was just like, what is... Like, like at least with... I know I keep praising it, and I think that I, it's obvious at this point. I enjoyed Andor. They, that, that's the type of TV show that's like, different than a lot of star wars content where they really muddy the lines between good and bad and that's yeah. when you introduce the sort of stuff where it's like are they really good are they really bad which some people really don't want that they just want are they good or they're bad boom that's it yeah and that's that's what the shows Something such like as that. andor are for or they, their job is to muddy stuff with this though they right. i felt like they tried to muddy up that episode and then they backed away and it's like was that necessary then <laughs> Uh, um, I don't know if you had any more thoughts on that, but part three was pretty much when uh, Sabine. Wait, well, it, it was when they left to go. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's it's when they track them to some planet so that they. Oh, so that yeah, and then they, Balin, <laughs> his apprentice, and the witch can make the calculations. The, yeah, the night sister. Make their calculations yes. so they can find Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh yeah, should we mention that? <laughs> Grand well, we, Admiral... we, 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 were, we were getting to that. Do you know what's so funny? What? The witch, the the witch who oh duh at the, the the opening of the first episode, I believe that's when they show Balin and his apprentice, and we're like, whoa, who are these scary Jedi? When they when they rescue yeah the uh, the witch, I forgot that she was. I thought she was a brand new character. We saw her in Mando season one. Or really? No, season two. Season two, yeah. No, so you know when, you know that one spin off episode when Mando runs into Ahsoka? Everyone was super hype because we, yeah, we got yeah, a live action Ahsoka. Yeah, I remember the Night Sister. She fights the Night Sister. With Ahsoka the in problem two of Mandalorian. with. Mandalorian. Yes, the problem with this plot is this. Wasn't this like. This TV show came out a year and a half, two years after season two, right? yeah and so right, point being two. i yeah, completely forgot she existed <laughs> like i had no clue she was part of this universe 
because she was a cool character for that episode, but I had no clue she was going to be involved in a massive plot. Yeah, I I literally was like, wait, who is she? Why is she relevant? It took me a minute, and I was like, oh, wait, I remember her. She was in season two of Mandalorian. I mean, yeah, I, I had no clue, though, until after I finished the entire show. I mean, I was, like, just looking back, and I was like, oh, I know that face. Whoa. So, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, part four, which is the halfway point of the show, was when it started to, like, really heat up, which was yeah, good. Yeah, got interesting. That was when, I believe that's the episode when Ahsoka fights Balin. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. they they stretched. They so yeah, they went that they went to a planet where Balin and his apprentice, the two bad Jedi in this, let's call them bad Jedi, pretty much. They're not Sith either. The two bad gray, Jedi in the show gray Jedi. are helping gray Jedi. Is that yeah, what you that's said? what that's what they that's what they're okay. considered if they're not part of the light or the dark. They're like a gotcha. neutral so, party. So yeah, they're they're, they're helping this Night Sister uh, use this orb, which has a map in it, to calculate where to go in the some galaxy far, far away to find Thrawn. And um, then so Ahsoka and Sabine track them down. Uh, during one episode, they're fighting to get to their location. And then the second part of this episode, which is number four, is when they actually engage with them. And then, oh, yeah. okay, you're getting married. No, not like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, And then so Ahsoka fights Balin in this duel. And then she gets kicked off this ledge in dramatic fashion, goes into the water, and Sabine thinks... Um, uh, Ahsoka Ugh, Ahsoka's dead. dead yeah oh yeah and then uh, Sabine had this moment with the orb because this was like a the peak of the episode she has a chance to destroy it but she mm-hmm. knows that Ezra also went with Thrawn way back when when they disappeared and she wants to see Ezra so she sort of surrenders herself with the yeah. map and they go off and leave right. the galaxy yep whoa and it's like I kind of like the idea that in order to get to another galaxy far, far away, you need a um, you need several hyperdrives, not just one, but several. Yeah, it, it actually that, makes that, makes sense. Yeah. Actually, makes sense, just because it's like another galaxy is like light years and light years away. Mm-hmm. So no, definitely. So yeah, having like I think it was five, six hyperdrives. That would be enough to actually do something like that. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Uh, hopefully my keyboard isn't picked up on my. Uh, what's the name of uh, Star Wars video games? We have Knights of the Old Republic. What was the other one? Was it like the High Republic, the New Republic? Um... Or was it? Okay, so pretty much what I theorized when they left to go to the other galaxy the only other time i mean i'm only so knowledgeable in star wars the only other time that i remember Mm -hmm. at least in big media of us the star wars fans having a chance to explore another galaxy was forgetting what game maybe it was nice to the old Old republic but talking about how the sith went off um into another galaxy right to pretty much survive and he eventually he made his own empire out there. Mm. I'm going to really simplify it. And then he eventually came back to our galaxy. That's like super simplified. There's so much to it. And I'm not going to get into that. But right, I thought I, I thought we were going to go see that because that had to do with this whole different order out in the galaxy. Pretty much saying like, hey, there's another Star Wars galaxy out there where the Emperor was doing some bad stuff before coming back to our galaxy. Mm-hmm. And I, I bet you a lot of people don't even know about that story, so this may not even ring a bell. But I that right. was the only other mention of us leaving the Star Wars galaxy. So I thought, hey, maybe we'll touch that. But then right. we we later learn it's not that. It's more contained, which is probably for the best. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let you lead this one because I believe you'll have the better thoughts on it. Um, episode 5, The oh, World Between boy. Worlds. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. You go. Uh... So, for anyone who remembers the very end of, um, let's see, it's, shoot. Episode 4. <laughs> episode 4 of, is when episode she falls four, in the water. Yeah, she falls in, Ahsoka falls in the water, ends into the 
fall, like and then falls into the world between worlds, which isn't the first time she had done that. She had done that earlier in an episode of Rebels. And um, she ends up meeting um, what is... Wait, I, I think it's important that we should explain. Like, it's sort of like this dream world. Uh, th- think of it that. It's like this yeah. force world. Think of it as like... It's like black, empty space all around you with like these translucent bridges all around you. And it's supposed to be like this sort of... It's, as you said, world, br- world between worlds... The best I can say is a dream, between... dream world. She's not dead. Obviously, she just fell off a cliff into water. So she's, but she's in this world. So she's not dead. But it's sort of like this weird in between. Yeah, it's according to, according to, uh, w- Wikipedia. <laughs> greatest source on the planet. It's known as it's a mystical plane within the forest that that served as a collection of doorways. And pathways existing between time and space, linking all moments in time. So pretty much, that is the textbook definition we need. <laughs> if you, it's pretty much it's it's a, as it says in the name, world between worlds. It's pretty much, it connects all moments in time and space together. I so, should have just know, let you describe that. Hold original, on. like or, like, everything in the Star Wars universe is connected. And pretty much, if you go through one, you'll end up in that specific point in time. You know? Very well said. <laughs> and yeah, so anyway, um, Ahsoka meets with the ghost of Anakin Skywalker, her old mentor. And um, they she ends up reliving certain moments in the past, mostly the Clone Wars... And it's really cool. It's really cool. It's like we get to see certain events like when Ahsoka was first Anakin's Padawan and then the Battle of Mandalore. And it's just Anakin, the ghost of Anakin is trying to help like Ahsoka learn some kind of thing that she hadn't learned already. So... It then leads up to this big fight between Anakin and Ahsoka, and then she wins. It's just, it's really cool. It's partially nostalgic, whilst also, like, make progressing the plot of Ahsoka as well. So, it, it's, it's really good. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, well, crap, I just spoiled it for you in the, well... Well, I didn't explain it all that well anyway, so if you haven't seen it already, I would suggest you go watch that, watch Ahsoka, because it's, it's, it's a good show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the, the coolest things, at least what you said with nostalgia, we got to see a live action uh, Captain Rex. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think that made the day for everyone. And then <laughs> even with Mandalore, like, hey, we just saw that in Clone Wars Season 7 not that long ago. Here's a somewhat like 20 second live reenactment of it it was really cool to see that yeah uh regarding the message i'm trying to remember exactly the i mean i i, I believe you were saying like you were struggling to remember it too which yeah I, 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 i'm trying I to remember too the, the whole point of it but something about her being a mentor I, i'm literally just looking up what did ahsoka learn i because it's been a month now and those small things i've forgotten <laughs> yeah it's it's really uh oh oh okay this thing reminded me so pretty much if i remember don't quote me but this is based on what mm-hmm. i mean i believe the whole thing was anakin was trying to remind her that although like she was taught to be a warrior she has to remember that in quotes like she, she's also a jedi like there, there's more to just fighting and that she needs to remember that when passing on these teachings to sabine that sabine doesn't just need to be a warrior but she also needs to be a leader a mentor a friend and i i, I guess a lot of that yeah. was just like the, the whole memories was like you like it's like just trying to remind us like yes you have been you were a warrior the entire time you were a Jedi, which mm-hmm. is not fair because that's not what you were supposed to be. But that's what you dealt with. 
And then it's also Anakin saying, like, but just because you went through that doesn't mean that's the only thing you need to pass on. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's what the message was. Something like that. That's it's vaguely coming back to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, I I, I read, I read like one that. line I read one line about uh warrior and then that just sparked what i remembered i as far as i know maybe i just went completely off but (laughs) yeah uh i think that that was like the inflection point of the show right there that was supposed to be like the turning point yeah and then of ahsoka's development as a character yeah and oh we even forgot we forgot about (laughs) friggin uh about friggin jason Sindula, the son of hera and that's not fair i mean i guess he has some parts i mean he because they thought that ahsoka was dead but through the forest jason was able to oh that's why they knew God that's why they knew the, 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 we and he could hear it in the waves, the clashing of lightsabers. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, it's it was cool, but like when you re, re- like like me just hearing you saying that, like <laughs> the, the, the board meeting. Hey guys, we want this little kid who's force sensitive to hear lightsabers and crashing waves and know that Ahsoka's alive. Like, whoa, guys! <laughs> whoa, like that's, they're it's, really it's pushing to make. They're really pushing to make him look like a Jedi. <laughs> or something. Uh, he th- did this say is something. reminding me of all the gripes uh, that I that I know I had, but also other people. This, this is another one. I know this is, we were sort of progressing through the episodes. We're just about done with those. But this is separate. Ahsoka's movement throughout the mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Something that I noticed was that she, part of his... Obviously, you when you're dealing with a live action show, you can't make it as fast and as crisp and clean as an animation. I mean, in animation, you can delete a frame, you can make a new one, you can nail it down to almost perfection. You can make that backflip look perfect. With this, though, part of it was also, I believe, I forgot that actor's name for Ahsoka, but she, she was limited by her knowledge of her, her ability Dawson. to... Oh, yeah. I mean... I think she did great overall, but I think a lot of the complaints were that she wasn't like as active as animated Ahsoka, mm-hmm. which the argument was like, oh, she's older now. But then granted, it's like, look at Yoda. <laughs> like, yeah. Look at old Yoda. He's, he's flipping <laughs> like crazy. I mean, like, <laughs> just uh, look at Obi-Wan when he's older. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not saying that like, as you get older, you have to be young as, yeah. as you once were. But, like, these people are Jedi. And so I, I guess the argument was that when people were watching her fight or her body language as she moved, yeah. it felt like all of the sudden she's becoming wise old Gandalf. That was a joke. Oh, my God. I just remember. <laughs> Wait, really? People uh, said that? So before she fell in the water, she had a gray cloak. When she comes out of the water... She, I don't know, remember, she has a uh, white cloak. It's literally Gandalf the Grey to Gandalf the White. <laughs> oh. oh that, was, that was the joke going around, because when Gandalf... When, my when dog he, just walked in, I'm sorry. Keeps uh, talking. It's, it's fine. When, when, when Gandalf... Oh, jeez, now, now I'm jumping to Lord of the Rings. What am I doing? When, when, for all you Lord of the Rings nerds, this is for you. When uh, Gandalf fell down with the Belrog, the Mines of Moria... It was his big inflection point for him as a character in the movies and, of course, the books. And then when he comes back in... I forgot the name of the forest outside of... Uh, Saur- Saruman's Tower, whatever. He, he's dressed in yeah. white now. So he goes from gray to white. Mm-hmm. And then that was 15, 20 years ago when that happened in the movies. <laughs> now we're having it in Ahsoka where he goes from gray to white. And it's impossible not to see the connection about we have this uh, wizard, or in this case a Jedi, who sacrifices themselves 
in, in a sense that they're in a battle they go into this sort of yeah mind state in the middle of everything have this realization and then they come out and they're wearing a white robe and they're sort of like yeah. ready to take on the challenge that they weren't ready for it before i just said before twice um sorry right. that, that, that was a bit of a spree but nah it's all good i just remembered that huh yeah. i'm so sorry folks i took us away um let's just go to episode six you know what uh yeah. introduction of admiral thrawn whoa guys we're back whoa. at it and i'd only remember thrawn from like <laughs> rebels as well as like the original like stuff that is now deemed non-canon yeah so i personally like... have yet to read them but the books talking about his tactics and his reputation i know it's super broad super yeah. easy to say but yeah he, that he's just a, a lot of those books set the stage for his character and, and then made him i personally a... only really have the experience with him in the rebels tv show which i believe is the same for you yeah i've it's, I mean, uh, he he. Although that was a kids' show, he was pretty iconic. I mean, he was scary. whenever he came in, his theme would play, and you knew that stuff was about to go down. Yeah, he. <laughs> now I'm just thinking of like, <laughs> just the memes of when he found out that Anakin Skywalker was Ahsoka's apprentice. <laughs> Oh yes. All right, uh, let's let's take a path down memory lane, folks. So, towards the end of the show, when I forgot exactly how he gets told that Ahsoka is pretty much hunting him down, and yeah. he's like, "Who is Ahsoka?" And then um, the witch, the main witch. I know we're we're leaving out lots of details. Whatever. <laughs> the witch explains that she is uh, Anakin's apprentice and he's like anakin's apprentice not anakin's like that but skywalker point being it's like you knew about anakin but not ahsoka yet you guys i swore they had some sort of interaction in rebels like for four seasons you're telling me that thrawn did not know about ahsoka and fulcrum like all of that but then I guess, oh my god, we're going way back. <laughs> Agent Callus, do you remember him with Rebels? Uh, wait, who? <laughs> oh my god. I'm so sorry. I keep steering us away. Ready? Another another path down memory lane. There was uh, a series of episodes where Fulcrum, who's Ahsoka, she's feeding the Rebel Alliance information yeah. about the yes. Empire. Thrawn catches wind of this, and he's like, hey, we got to figure out who this is. So he tasks Agent Callus. I don't know if you remember him. He's sort of like an Imperial, not officer, but like, I believe he's ISB, I think. He, Maybe. He, he's an agent. He has like a mustache, sort of light brown hair. Right. He has like unique sort of Imperial black armor, but like no helmet. But he does have a helmet, but sometimes. Uh, he, he was famous for uh, fighting... Mm-hmm. oh my god what's his name uh he, he had like an energy staff at one point mm-hmm. anyways he takes the fall for being he pretends to be fulcrum at one point when he decides to join the rebellion so anyways that might be a reason why thrawn never knew ahsoka but going back to your thing about Maybe. the whole gaming thing just people were shocked about like here is this I'm going to call him the Napoleon of the Empire. <laughs> and he doesn't know who Ahsoka is. It's like, you fought... It's just surprising that all of a sudden it's like, who is this uh, Who is this Gandalf Ahsoka in white <laughs> trying to go after Who the me. hell is she? <laughs> yes. So anyways, that, that was season six. It's boom. Uh, Thrawn is back. He has an army somehow still. They have survived all these years somehow people were theorizing like oh they're like undead army we later learned that no that was not the case they just somehow were living off i don't know yeah a peanut a day (laughs) i don't even want to know how they tried to explain the rations (laughs) on that side of thing right oh uh, man let's see see uh not season seven episode seven after that was um uh, ah- 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 ahsoka 
and Sabine sort of start their... Oh my god, I'm sorry, I keep jumping around, but also I'm just... I keep jumping around in my brain because I'm trying to remember. They find Ezra! Oh my god, how could I forget Woo-hoo! about that? The, the main reason why the show is happening in the first place. It's exactly. i like, okay, Kyle, what are you going to talk about? Uh, you're going to skip over the main reason of the show? That sounds great. <laughs> Yeah, right. so the, the driving factor of why the characters are even in this point is they run into Ezra on this planet in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. They find him. Ooh. Yeah. I think it's, because I remember, if I remember correctly, it's Sabine who finds him first, and then during a yes. battle, Ahsoka reunites with <laughs> Ezra during a fight against Theron's soldiers. And they did that very well. Balin's... That felt like it was straight out of an episode of Rebels. Ezra was very goofy. Sabine was... It, it actually felt like probably her most, I'm going to say, Mandalorian-ish like that. That was like her most Mandalorian moment. And then Ahsoka was helping them fight. Yeah. Let's talk about Ezra, too. I mean, he's been on in a galaxy, another galaxy far, far away for God knows how long. Years. He's looking. He's looking good. <laughs> as a, as a I, way to put it, the, it, like I mean, seriously, the beard suits him. It's, I looks, mean, I was getting like, I, like the way that he was dressed and stuff with like it almost looked like chainmail. Like I thought we were diving back into like the medieval <laughs> times, and I, yeah. I yes, I, I I thought it looked very cool. He looks like a freaking monk. But that's... I, I, I don't know about Mark, but way. yeah. But yeah. I don't know. It's just his... I guess. The way he says... The way it just looks screams monk to me. I'm gonna... I'm gonna look him up real quick just to remind myself of his outfit. Because one of the things I was thinking of was uh, the, the chain mail. That was something that I was impressed with. I, I don't know why. I just thought that was a cool touch. Yeah. And it's also kind of cool that at first he just fights using the force. That's not really that something we see that often. That was an interesting one. Because he... Oh, when they're challenging Thrawn later in the next episode, the final yeah. finale, he goes onto Ahsoka's ship, which she arrived on the planet later. I, I sort of mm-hmm. went over... I, I didn't explain that. But he builds a lightsaber on the ship. And I'm wondering, where did his original lightsaber go? Hmm. Unless there was something, like, at the end of Rebels, like, he lost his lightsaber? I thought he still had it with him. Yeah, it's it's weird. That's just because Sabine This lightsaber is your life. Do not lose it. Uh, I forgot exactly how Obi-Wan put it. It was um, something like that, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's... (laughs) <laughs> i can't remember exactly i believe he paid homage to his like original lightsaber well like, his first lightsaber was like cool because it had like a sh- sort of shock blaster built into the the hilt and it was a lightsaber yeah. right and then and... His, his next lightsaber when he became you could say like a true jedi it was a regular lightsaber i can't remember if he tried to do like a mix between blaster and lightsaber when he rebuilt his lightsaber here in Ahsoka. Yeah, he it turns from what I remember, he made it so that it was like Kanan's lightsaber. Oh, that was I remember there's something unique. Yeah, he he goes yeah, was, in this sort of they do do a little bit of backstory talking about how Kanan's hilt was this, and now Ezra, the apprentice of Kanan, just mm-hmm. he, he happens to also want a similar hilt which shows the connection between them. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, so that leads into the final episode. Wow, I've done a really bad job of outlining those. <laughs> Tell me about it. So yeah, final episode, they they get help from the New Republic from four New Republic X-Wings, which were yep. illegally sent. We don't need to explain that. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. they're trying to get Thrawn. And surprisingly, what caught me off guard is Thrawn escapes. I was like, oh, certainly they're going to end it here, but no, Thrawn gets away. Yep, Thrawn gets away. And they away. show Thrawn at the end of the episode arriving back in our main galaxy, but going to Dathomir, which is, mm-hmm. as we all know, where the witches live. 
Mm-hmm. And oh, something that they were showing was all the cargo. So back on the, I don't even know how to describe this, but the the planet that everyone went to to find Thrawn was an old Night Sisters planet, like an ancient one. And there was a couple right. Night Sisters helping him there, and um, they were unloading all these like they were all identical like cargo containers that in my opinion sort of looked like coffins and there were like right. hundreds of them that they were that they were loading onto the star destroyer that Thrawn had another thing i didn't mention guys he still has a star destroyer well, yeah like, no. <laughs> and ezra managed to get back as well oh my god another thing dude i'm I'm terrible. I shouldn't be explaining this. I'm forgetting I, so it's much. It's been a while for me as well, dude. A lot, a lot has happened in the end, in the end of Ahsoka. It's yeah. so, okay. We, we need to think. Was there anything really important? I'm pretty that we missed? sure. From what? Nah. Not that I can remember. See, that's the problem. Remember something I'm struggling with. Yeah, right yeah tell me about it. <laughs> I'm struggling with some stuff too. Uh, but well, anyway, yeah. Yeah. And then Ahsoka and Sabine are stuck, right? I hey. think so. I'm pretty sure so. they were stuck they were, they were stuck. left on the planet. On the, Unless they like pull out a horn and forward. call the space whales back, but <laughs> that was something I didn't mention. Guys, Ahsoka got to the planet in the first place by hopping in the mouth of a space whale while inside a ship. Boom, end of story. Yep. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moving us forward. Aiden, give us yes. your rating of the show. I would say I give this a full-on 7.5 out of 10. It's not, it's not, in some parts it's not the best, but in other points it's not the worst. So it's mostly good. It's mostly good. I really liked... I really liked watching uh, this series. It's just another win in my book. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I actually am super similar. I was going to say 7 out of 10, so not far off. I mean, yeah. I, thought, I thought overall it was it, it had some good parts. Plenty for me to gripe about. And right. I honestly shouldn't go much more into detail because I can't even remember like 100% what I thought <laughs> about it. And I know I just said that a minute ago. Remember, remember. Nope, I can't remember. So from what I can remember, I enjoyed it for the most part. Yeah. yeah I had a lot of nitpicks, such as I mentioned earlier, about Ahsoka just being slower as in like the – the way that they choreographed her, there were some lightsaber battles that people praised. Like, hey, that looks good. There's some that I thought were like, what is what is happening? Like, where's George Lucas for all this? Like, where are our golden lightsaber fights that we used to have? And then, yeah. I mean, there were small things like that. I don't know if they're necessarily small. But there are little bits like that that I thought could use work. Yeah. Overall, it it was good. I'm going to end it on that. It was good overall. Nothing yep. amazing. And to be honest, part of what makes it way better than maybe it really is is the fact that we've had a number of cruddy shows and episodes the last couple of years. So this this somewhat makes up for it. Yes. So I think at this point I'm just running out of steam. <laughs> yeah, I'm running out of steam here too. So I, I guess with that, thank you all so much for watching this latest episode of the discussion alliance i am very glad we were able to do this again i yeah, really am while. happy that we were able to do this again <laughs> so thank you everyone if you have made it this far i i salute I, uh, you i we salute, salute you, you big time we salute yes. you because <laughs> it's just been a lot of rambling this episode Anyway, yeah, this was just um, us trying to come back and be like hey we gotta make an episode <laughs> yeah so, if you guys are new around here, make make sure to subscribe to the Real Good Podcasts YouTube channel and enable all notifications so you don't miss out. And, or, and if you are listening to us via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, then make sure to hit a follow if you are new or coming back on the regular. 
Oh yeah, that reminded me. So that the Discussion Alliance folks is now under the title of Real Good Podcasts. So yes, it's, it's, it's it's under that branch. Can you remind me? Is uh so the Discussion Alliance was the original name, as you said. Now, yes. if you're going onto YouTube, look for the Real it, Good Podcast. Or look is for it Real, good, Real good, good. It's Real Good Podcasts. Gotcha. Is that name also on the Spotify and Apple uh, podcast thing, or is it just Discussion Alliance on there? It's just Discussion Alliance, and it has Real Good Entertainment as the name under. Um, gotcha. Okay, I just wanted Spotify. to clarify that for you guys yeah, out there. Real quick. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching again, and um, we'll see you next time. May the force be Thank with you. Thank you, everybody. You.